So you can see here, these large trees, which are overhanging the roof, dropping all their leaves down into the gutters. So that'll be the first thing that I wanna do is remove some of these trees, do a tip run, vegetation run. Try and get into these trees as well, trim them back. But all this, I will get the local excavator driver to remove it because it will just be able to hit it so much harder and just clean it right up in no time at all. So that'll be in a future video, but for now, here's some footage of tree removal. six of them I'm going to prune them back I don't really know a great deal about roses but I'm going to prune them right back cut out the root bowl try and preserve them I've got a neighbor who wants a few plants plant them over there I'll do a little short video of time-lapse and I'll just should improve that area it's just a little lawn area You're easy to maintain and mow so here we go Excavators, they've just rolled up. You can see, got a beautiful little skid steer with a grading attachment. And then they got this beautiful, looks like a, maybe a five tonner cobble co. There's the new gate. So what I'll do is I'll set up the camera, put it on time lapse, but the first job will be flattening out the land, getting all the high points off, filling in the low points and defining what I'm going to do. So here we go. Before, vegetation up there, old carport pad, all the lumps and bumps of the land, remove tree stumps level everything out make it pretty check the mic and make sure it sound right boys Right, boy. Big, 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 big
sound right boy so that's the end of day one with the excavators really really productive day with the um, the five ton excavator so first thing this morning we've taken out a lot of soil from underneath the swing of the gate which goes onto the rear lane over excavated that so that I can pour a concrete slab 100 150 mil concrete slab and a crossover towards the lane and then we moved up the property taking off the high points filling in the low I set out the footprint for the double garage which I'll show you in a minute um, and we've excavated that and then finally we went up the western boundary up towards the house took out the large tree stump excess vegetation and some more soil so i'm going to flip you around just give you a quick panorama view of the first day so that's it here's the over excavated area for the concrete driveway high points taken off low points filled There you can see the excavation for the two car garage, double garage. And basically let the cars swing in. Cars will go in there to roll the doors and that'll look quite nice. And then I'll have a footpath up here. Put that in a future video. All that vegetation is gone. Outside. All looking really neat. That's good, ready for me to set out for tomorrow. All the vegetation, there's the monster stump. It's actually easier to get out than I thought. White ants had got in the middle of it. The carport concrete is all gone and put to the side for future use. And that's it, end of day one. And I'll be back in a couple of days. It allows me to set out.
The excavator company has been here for the last two and a half days and they've done an amazing job. They've cleared all the backyard, all vegetation has been removed. They've done the rough footprint of the two car garage and they've also excavated for my retaining wall which will retain the lawn, the closed drying area, nice little entertaining area. So my next stage was I, this morning, first thing I approached the local steel merchants and I have purchased, ordered the H beams which support the retaining wall. So that may have a little bit of a lead time, maybe three to four days. So in that time, I'm gonna take advantage of the situation and start downpipes and gutters, which in most cases they've completely rotten out the down pipes have backed up and they've completely failed so they all have to be replaced um, I'm going to start tearing them down gently I don't want the rafter tails which the brackets connected to to split out being cypress and fairly old have a tendency to be dry brittle and they tend to split so I want to avoid that the other issue I've got is the mains power which comes off the road is bolted and connected to a rafter tail. So the main cables which are live um, hang just below the gutter. Um, obviously I want to avoid those gutters falling down and connecting with the cables, it's pretty serious. So I might just build a little protective box around the connection point. So I'm gonna set the camera up do a bit of a time lapse and start easing the gutters down. Let's hit it. Okay, so this is um, a bit of first inspection of the roof and the gutters. So the gutters are Some of the best 
tools that you'll be using during demolition will need to be prying and hammering. So that's what I'm going to focus on this week. So I'm going to start with the smallest tools, no particular order, but these are tools that have served me really well. Some I've used um, more often than others. And one of them, which I'll show you last, is potentially one of the best tools I've ever bought, power tools included. So let's start with the smallest. And probably the most common is the hammer. That's pretty obvious. Um, used in demolition, I've had this hammer for a very long time, probably like seven or eight years. Um, this is an S-Wing, American made, and you can see here, nice flat face. This has got more of a downturned claw, which I don't particularly like. I probably prefer either the more traditional round or flat, but this is good. Good all round hammer, obviously for hammering nails, but also prying removing architraves and skirtings. During demolition, you can remove a bit of brickwork, masonry. Just generally, have it on your tool belt, always there, just a bash about tool. But on the flip side, also you can do very fine work. Finish nailing, you know, just nudging things together. So very versatile, very handy. If you're undertaking renovation, first tool you should have. Second tool is nips or wire nips. Um, usually used in construction for tying steel, um, but these are very versatile. Um, when you need to remove nails, you clamp onto the head of the nail and you can leave it down off the wall. Very, very useful. If you want to remove delicate nails during demolition and you don't want to bust the wall apart, you can use these to pry. Very, very handy. So, a pair of nips. The next tool is a flat bar. Um, obviously, as the name suggests, um, or pry bar, you're prying material off the wall. If you've got a delicate wall and you only want to remove skirtings or arc trays, for example, you can actually apply pressure to those elements and you can slip door skin or thin plywood up underneath this section and instead of compressing plasterboard walls and keeping them intact, it's levering off that sacrificial bit of plywood to remove skirting. This one I just got from a local hardware store, very cheap. The brand is Heart. It's got a handy little nail remover here and here. Um, very, very useful for also levering doors off floors and etc. The list goes on and on for tools like this. I'd, I'd suggest also, I couldn't find mine, but you can get smaller pry bars, different lengths. And I know that Crescent make those, and they're also very useful. Staying on prying is a, a pinch bar. I've had this for a very long time. In fact, I inherited this one. Um, this one's got a very, very funny swoop on each end, which is more of a hindrance sometimes than, than use, but you can get up into awkward little spots. You can leave the stuff, leave the doors off, hinges, um, remove flooring, very useful. Now this is a great tool, this is a must have. It's called a cat's paw. This one's made by Estwing. You can get these from any hardware stores. And this is really, really useful. Not only can you remove nails delicately by striking this end and starting off the nail by working its way out there, you can also flip it and use it as a hammer. So you're 
using that lever action to remove nails as well. Very lightweight, once again you can get different lengths and sizes but this is about average size length and I've found it really useful. Started to mushroom here and I ground it back, I've ground it back a couple of times and sharpened it, really really handy. So definitely have one of these. So lastly, but definitely not least on the list, in fact, this tool is probably one of the most versatile and handy tools I've ever bought. So if you're gonna go out and get your first tool, which is a hammer, get this tool at the same time. You will not regret it. I've known this, this tool as um, being called a Burke bar. I think in America they're called Burke bar, so that might be the brand, but um, in Australia, I haven't seen them around that often. Only in the last four or five years have they become popular. This one's made by Ox. And what length is it? 1.4 meters in length. Huge prying capacity. I mean, with this, you could, if you're building frames, you could easily lever frames off concrete slabs and shift large wall frames around. Um, during demolition, this will be your best friend. You can really go to town and just remove skirtings, architraves. Um, you can lift up windows. Not only has it got the weight, but this is very sharp. This is um, spring steel, very strong. Um, I have in the past removed a little bit of masonry with it, but that's not you know, something that you probably want to do all the time, but this is more for timber frame houses. It's just so versatile, removing floors, removing decking boards. Really, really useful tool. I can't stress how much this has been a help to me. Even further down the line, if you're staying with construction, um, removing formwork is just amazing. Really, really good. So that's my list for demolition stage. Um, some of them you can do without. Some of the tools are a must have like this. And you wanna look out for those tools that can just do more than one thing. So that's it, the end of another episode. I'm really happy with the amount of work that my subcontractors have been able to achieve over the last couple of weeks. And what it's been able to do is open up a whole other series of jobs that I can turn my attention to. Being out here on my, working on my own is pretty trying at times, but I think the real key is to just focus on single elements. Don't try and open up too many different jobs because your mind becomes scattered and you end up in a bit of a mess. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope you're enjoying the series. Next week will be mostly on the construction of my retaining wall and which uh, type of design that I've chosen to go with. The construction of that and also a few other elements on the site which I'll surprise you with. So uh, give it a thumbs up, please leave comments and I'm happy to answer questions along the way. Stay safe and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.